I learned that there were four different parenting styles. Four different parenting styles out there when it comes to parenting. So there's one that's called the authority parent. This is a parent that puts tons of boundaries and uh, laws in there. This is a parent whose discipline reflects how they're feeling. This is a parent that can change in a second and be yeah. their child. This is a parent that doesn't allow any uh, any growth outside of what they're doing. This is a this is a parent that doesn't stop to say, "Hey, I want to support my kid in their football game. I want to support my kids in what they do." We also have a permissive parent. This is a parent that wants to be your friend. That wants to be your best friend. So they won't get onto you. They won't decide for you on many things. There's very limited boundaries in your life. We have a disengaged parent, a parent that doesn't want to get involved in your life. A parent that is like, hey, you go do you, I'm going to focus on my own life. Yeah. I didn't even know you were born. When did you get involved? <laughs> this is that kind of parent. And then we have the supportive parent. This one is known to be the best one. Mm. This supportive parent is one that doesn't always discipline, but corrects, helps, trains and teach. This is a parent that has the right boundaries in mind, understands where a child is at in their life and helps build them. Mm. So I had to make a PowerPoint for this presentation. And there were many, I tried to get as many uh, animations as I could. I tried to make it as flashy as I possibly could. So I was looking for examples of them, but there wasn't much of a supportive parent. There wasn't much, many examples of a supportive father. I wonder if anyone ever knew and anyone ever knew what a supportive father looked like? A supportive parent looked like? What is a supportive parent? Well, what examples are there of fathers in the world today? Today we have Family Guy. Mm. <laughs> today we have Simpsons. Mm -hmm. We have fathers who are overweight and goofy and mess around a lot. They don't really have much of a relationship. We look at, we look at the movies and we see fathers who have divorces with their parents and don't really get along with their child. Trying to, they're more so fighting for the child to get at the parent, the other parent right there. Not many good examples. We have TV programs like Senses of Family Guy, Overweight. We also have uh, fathers who have good intents in these movies but still put work above their family. Mm. As far as media goes, there is no such thing as a supportive father, believe it or not. No such thing. Setting good foundation for their you no know, supportive father setting good foundation for their children. And unfortunately, that is the world we live in today. That is the world we have. And we actually live in a country where almost a third of the children born in this country live in father fatherless houses. They live without fathers. So it's kind of upsetting when we see that. And this is Auckland. This is New Zealand. This isn't a very big country. This is a small population in the very corner of the earth. Imagine what's it, what it's like when it comes to a bigger population in the center of the world. Wow. Imagine how many people grew up without fathers. Yeah. Imagine how many there are. It's actually taught in university. And this was taught in my class. We were used as an example. My teacher turned around and she said, many of you, if not all of you, are going to get a divorce. Whoever here gets married, you're going to get divorced. Wow. I, I thought she was taking me. I was like, Miss, you know I'm married, right? <laughs> she said, many of you are going to get divorced. And if anything, you're going to be dragging your children into your third marriage. Wow. wow. That is something that, is actually, that was actually taught. And it's crazy. It was crazy sitting there for us. Most people don't even really want to have children these days. Most people don't want to be parents. They don't want to take part, uh, they don't uh, want to take part of what is seen as now a boring commitment to another person. It's not only the view of a father that has been attacked, but it's also the, the view of a faithful and loyal committed man. As a young man, uh, I have to try, as a young married man, I actually have to try extra hard to be faithful to my wife. I don't want to believe it in the beginning. But I actually have to try extra hard to remain faithful to my wife. This was because the world no longer sees value in marriage. The world no longer sees value in that commitment. To society, I am a single young man with a ring on my left hand and a contract in my back pocket. Wow. That's what it is today. So you can imagine when looking for an example of a truly supportive parent, there wasn't much I could find. But then I realized. It was then I realized 
that I have overlooked the best example any of us can ever have. Mm. The best example there is. And that's God. Yeah. Yeah. God was the best example. And so the title of my Father's Day lesson today is A Faithful and Supportive Father. And this brings me to point one, a faithful father. Faithful for life. It says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Verse 18. Uh, the, Lord said, the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make, sorry. I will make him a helper. To a helper, a helper super suitable for him. I'll make a help, helper suitable for him. In Genesis 2, verse 22, it then says, Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. He brought and he brought her to him. God actually intended man and woman to be together. He intended a man and a woman to be together. He didn't intend anything else. There was nothing else on his agenda when it came to a marriage. These days there are so many different types of relationships that's actually taught in schools. You have, there's actually one relationship where a, part, where a man can live in a house and just have multiple people who he just has sex with. No marriage, no commitment, the only commitment is through sexual relations. Something taught in schools these days. So, there are, there are, some, there are even some beliefs that say it's actually a requirement to have multiple wives to get to heaven. It's a they say it's a requirement. So, uh, to say it's, they say it's a requirement to get to heaven. God intended that a man has one woman, which is why Adam only had Eve. Yeah. There was no Stacy, there was no Emma, <laughs> and neither was there a George. <laughs> there was a faithfulness that God wanted man to live by. Yeah. There was a family structure that God had intended man to have. Yeah. Today, people want faithfulness without the commitment. But I don't really know how that works. I'm here for you, just don't expect me to be around. Is that what it is? Mm. I'm only a phone call away, but text me unless something really bad happens. Mm. No such thing as faithfulness without commitment. It is understandable that not everyone understands faithfulness. That's understandable. Not everyone has had the example in their life, either. But God is an example for all. No matter who you are, no matter what you've seen, no matter what you've heard. An example of a father who holds, who holds, his, uh, who holds it onto his word. A father that is there even, uh, even after we mess up. Mm. A father that is there for the long run. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, it says, be strong and courageous. Yeah. Do not be do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This is what God said to Joshua. What God said to Joshua when he began to lead his people. When he began to lead God's people. God made a promise to him. A promise to never leave him nor forsake him. God won't leave you halfway. He won't leave you halfway, nor will change his mind and turn around. Yeah. God won't forsake you. He won't give up on you. He won't say, ah, no, no, no use in trying, no use in continuing. It doesn't matter what happens. He will never give up on you. Yeah. Nor will he abandon you. God is faithful to his word. And in the same way, he calls us to be faithful. He sets the example, he calls us to be faithful also. He calls us to be like him in this. The teachers that we that we were made sorry. Uh, Uh, we were made to be like him. The Bible teaches, there we go, that we were made in God's image. Yeah. To have qualities of God in us. And as children, He wants us, He wants to teach us to be faithful and to help, uh, sorry, and to help get us through. Mm. 
Yeah, it's what God intends for us. Mm -hmm. In First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen, it says, "No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide a way of escape that you may also be able to enjoy." We need to learn to look to God. We need to learn to look to God as an example. There's no temptation that God cannot help us get through. No temptation that God cannot help us with. We need to trust that He is here to help us. He sets an example that helps us. We need to acknowledge that He is here to help us. We need to be, uh, we need to be, that, uh, we need to be what He, sorry, just cut out of it. Uh, we need to acknowledge that He's here to, to help us no matter what. Yeah. We need to acknowledge that He's here to support us and get us through. Come on, Chris. There are, all, there's all, there are always, there's always going to be things that are going to tempt us, no matter what. Even if you cover your eyes and just live life with only your ears, there's still going to be things that will be out there tempting you. Yeah. Even if you cover your ears and go and keep your eyes covered, there will still be things to tempt you. It could be a workmate at school, at work. Someone you spend a lot of your time with. This person can be temptation. It could be an attractive person you see on the street. Someone again that can tempt you. You are upset and you can no longer bother trying. That feeling as well is good, is pretty much temptation. Isaiah uh, chapter 49, verse 13 to 15, it says, Shout for joy. The heaven, shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into songs, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people, and he will have compassion on his, on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. But can a mother forget a baby at her breasts? and have no compassion on the child she has born. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. God is saying, he cares about you like you are his child. You are his children. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, a mother may forget her own child, but God will never forget you. There was actually a, a, another story I had about a time where I was with my mom, and because of what she was going through, she actually left us outside and went all the way home. Yeah. To, to hear that story, people told me that before I actually found out what my mom was going through. And because of that, I had a deep hatred for my mom. Wow. To be left behind somewhere doesn't feel nice. No. Whether or not it's true or not, if someone tells you you've been left behind and it's something you believe, you have a deep hatred for whoever it was that left you behind. You have a deep hatred for whoever, whoever it is that left you there. His example is in the value. God's example is in His value and how much He values us. How can we be faithful if we don't see value? And what we want to be faithful to? It's not possible. When you value something, you are faithful to it. When you value something, you are committed to it. Yeah. However, these days, People have more value in money, materials, and looks. No matter what it is, they have more value in these things. They leave their wives for younger women because of their beauty, because of the value that they put in beauty. Women no longer want families these days because they value their career a whole lot more. People are losing value in what really matters most. Today, people don't value God because they don't want to value what God values. Instead, they go after their own interests. They value what they themselves interest, uh, are interested in, what they want. Purity. Some people say, I want to love whoever I love. I want to express myself how I express myself. But they don't see that every time they're losing themselves to whoever it is they're with, and it comes to a point where they no longer see any worth in themselves. Yeah. They no longer have any value in themselves. The value that God sees in them. People, people lose value in people. I can't be asked to share my faith. 
I can't be asked to help someone. I can't be asked to, to, to want to be with these people. Well, if you don't help them, who's going to help them? Yeah. If we don't go out there and help people, who's going to go out there and help people? And then there's family. What faithful father does not care about his family? What faithful father isn't thinking about his family? These days, we have, we have Christians that don't want to hang out with other Christians. Mm. You walk out there on the street, Sean preached about it once before. He went, uh, there was Thursday night, we went and met a Christian. He said, yeah, I'm a Christian. He's like, yeah, sweet, let's hang out. Oh, I ain't got time. I'm good. How often do you meet someone who calls himself a Christian, but they don't just want to spend some time with you? Mm. Have you ever watched, have you ever seen in a movie where you have these two siblings, or maybe, most of us probably if we have siblings, we go through this ourselves. <laughs> yeah. You see these two brothers, and your other brother says, hey dad, I want to go outside. Mm -hmm. Can I go have some fun? Yes, yeah, son, take your little brother. I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> I'm done. You go to your room and say, dad won't let me go outside. He said, take your little brother. God is the same way. He wants us to hang out with each other. Yeah. He wants us to be with each other. Because God values the family. And in yeah. the same way, He wants us to value the family. God wants us to value each other. There is no excuse for why we can't look to each other. For why we can't help one another. Even if they are in another country, a family member is in another country, yeah. surely no value. If you, if you have value in that person, no value that you really have can be less than the distance you may have to travel. If you truly have value in family, that value is greater than any distance. My dad values his family. And over the years, when I was living with them, I pressed them to make some decisions that he really did not want to make. Um, my, dad was, my dad saw the need for a mother in our lives, and I thank my dad for that. And so he continued actually looking for someone who would take in his kids and love them. When he found someone, little did I know how incredible that woman would actually be. Mm. When he found someone, he found someone who he knew could look after us. He believed could look after us. That's what my dad wanted to do. He wanted to provide for us in ways he, he could have as we grew up. But I forced my dad to make a decision between me and my mom. Between me and the person who was looking after his kids and helping them more than anything else. And at the, end, at the end of it, I chose to leave. I didn't want to be there anymore. I didn't want to be with my dad. I can imagine the upset that he himself went through. In the end, I left my father's house. And I didn't know just how wrong it was. What the, the good intent that he had behind that. I wish I did value my mom more. I wish I did share in the value that my dad saw in my mom. I wish I did value her more. The meals that she cooked were far better than the ones that my dad did, and so he saw the need for my mother. Yeah. The way she stitched was far better than how he did, so he also saw another need for her. He saw greater value in her than he even saw uh, in himself when it came yeah. to being a mother. That's the sacrifice my dad made. But today, I'm thankful that I do see that value in my mom. And unfortunately, it only took me getting married and having a wife and her later on saying, your mom's done so much for you that I finally learned how much value there was in her. Yeah. We need to take value in what God sees value in. Yeah. We need to take value in these things. So, my challenge for you today. God teaches us faithfulness by His example. And in turn, be faithful to God. Be faithful to the God you serve. Be faithful by practicing the values that He sees. Value. Be, be faithful by valuing what He sees value. Value each other. Value the life that He calls us to live. Value the worldwide value. Point number two, a supportive father. He is always there to help. It says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse, from verse 30, it says, Even those who are young grow weak. Even us young guys, Tim and Pascal, we grow weak. You, uh, you people can, can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and never get weary. They will walk and not get weak. 
You know, us young people, we think we can do everything. We think there's not a single thing we cannot do. We ignore the fact that we get, can get pretty tired sometimes. I remember, I, I do like seeing Pascal on the court when he thinks he can go a, a 10 minute longer. And, and he's there on his knees, hunched over, trying to catch his breath. <laughs> we think we can do everything. Uh, there was even this time where M Marani spoke to Margot and Margot gave Marani this, <laughs> this awesome uh, outline of this meme. It's pretty funny. It says, to all teenagers, Leave while you still know everything. <laughs> you know those days when you're a teen, like, Mom, you know nothing! You walk out. Mom, moms actually know more than teenagers. We think we got everything. The new generation are all about sports and fitness. And even still, we get tired. Doesn't matter how much you work out, you still get tired. Yeah. Amen to that, okay? It's unfortunate to see that fathers aren't expected to be very supportive of Fathers aren't expected to be that kind of, to have that kind of support. And it's even more unfortunate, people don't think God, think of God as a supportive father either. Mm. God is calling himself someone that gives you strength. He's calling himself someone who's not only going to help you get up, but he's going to help you run. And man, who here does not want to fly? You get some eagle wings right there. Mm. There are many things that we face in life that will force us to stop moving forward. We have dreams that we no longer even think about. Dreams that you've not even spoken about. Dreams that you've chosen to forget. The reason you stop is because you aren't relying on God anymore. God gives us everything we need for victory. Though still, none of these tools are being put in you, to use in our own lives. There is a definition of a father that says, a man who carry, a father is a man who carries pictures in his wallet where his money used to be. As a father. Another, fa another father I love is my grandfather. My grandfather in London. And I really wonder how many times he opens his wallet to give me money. This is the father. This is the grandfather that gave me twenty dollars every weekend up until a point where it reached up to like four, six hundred, and then when he came to collect it, it was no longer there. It must have fallen out or something. That's what I told him. Uh, this is this is him. I remember when I was young, he took uh, he took me and he, and he taught me many things. There was one saying he always said when we were kids: If you're not old enough, you're big enough, and if you're not big enough, you're old enough. Unfortunately for my height back then, I could not find any flaws in that, in that statement. Yeah. There was nowhere I could find them. This was a man who grew up in Antigua. Uh, he grew up uh, a hard life, uh, on a farm, didn't have much money. Uh, his father put his uh, stepbrothers and sisters over him and didn't really give him much value. He left the house every morning to go fill up a bucket so everyone could have a shower. He looked after his animals and he looked after this cow that I, I always heard about. Uh, he would go take the cow for a walk. I think he took for a walk or something. Um, we did this thing with this cow and then he would come back home from school and he will go look after the animals again. He always said he worked so hard he was ashamed that he had to go to school like, because of how much work he had to do. But a day came where he himself had to run away from Antigua. His dad had pretty much abandoned him. Yeah. And so he got on a flight and came to London, went to London. And from in London, he worked as hard as he could. This was the most hardest working man I have ever seen, and I'm so grateful for the hard work that he did. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't, he didn't really get much time with my mom because of uh, my grandmother, their, their disputes. Uh, they moved, separated, and their disputes actually was something that contributed to my mom's mental disability. But he never let that happen between him and my sister. He never allowed the day to pass where he was in their place. This is a this is a man. He himself said he's been there since I've known myself, and that's true. This is a man that looked to provide for me, that looked to help me, that looked to build me up. This is a man who always is talking about his will because he wants me to know that there's money for him for me when I die. He's always talking about his houses. When he came, he invested money into houses so that even when he passed, he could still look after my sister and myself. And in the same way, God really wants to 
provide for us. God is looking to provide for us, no matter what. Yeah. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you'll call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. These guys were in slavery. Slavery for 70 years. Not because God wanted them there for that long. But that's just how long it took for them to actually begin crying out to God. And he, uh, for him to come and help. For them to ask him to help. For them to depend on him. It took them 70 years. God has a great plan for your life, guys. A great and awesome plan. But there are also other people who have plans for their lives. Try thinking of who they are. One person could be your mom. Another person could be your boss. Your doctor even has a plan for your life. But one person we always miss out on is ourselves. It's yourself. You have a plan for your own life also. We all know God's plan is far greater than any other plan that we have. But I want you to ask yourself, hey, are you really living out God's plan for your own life? Yeah. Are you really going by that plan? We all know God's plan is better, but ask yourself, although you know God's plan is good, are you actually going by it or following your own plan? God gave us a dream. God gave us dreams and he wants them to come true. He wants you to be happy. He cares about your joy and your life. He sees that there, he sees that there are going to be hardships for you as you keep on going after your dreams. But there is very little he can do to help you when you put your own plans to just get through above his plans to give you victory. In Psalms chapter 20, verse 6, it says, Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers, he answers him from heaven. He, he answers him from his heavenly uh, sanctuary with the victor with the victorious power of his right hand. Yeah. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of our Lord God. Mm. God wants to support you. He wants to build up your dreams. He wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to get that promotion. He wants you to get that permanent residency. Come on. Yeah. And for some who still want to do ICCM, he wants you to achieve ICCM at some point. If that Come on, Pascal. Really your dream. <laughs> he wants you to go after these things. And in my life, I really want to go after these things. Yeah. I want to go after the dreams that I have, but we've got to rely on God. Because he is a supportive father and is wanting to support us. So hey, are you talking about your goals with God? Are you really talking about your dreams with God? Let me tell you my dreams. Come on. I want to gain victory in my university degree. Come on. I want to do my masters in ICCM. Woo! Woo! I want to baptize a best friend every month. That is what I want. And then I want my first child in two years also. I would love to have that, so I should get ready for two years. <laughs> but we've got to be able to have a good conversation with God about these dreams. Oh, sorry, the number one was also was uh, I want to be able to have a good conversation with my, my father-in-law in Spanish Vamos. Uh, by the end of this year. So right now, all I can say is, hola, padre, David, como estas, yo bien, yes, can you tell him this please? That's it for me. Those are my goals. But we've got to talk to God about these things. Yeah. We've got to seek support from God about these things. My challenge here is depend on God in your life. Don't let a day pass when you're not talking to him about your goals. Mm. Don't let a day pass when you're not talking to God about your dreams. Yeah. Go out there and talk to God each morning. Talk to God each day. Talk to him throughout the day. And even talk to each other about it. Yeah. Let other people see the victories that God is putting on. In conclusion, a faithful father, God is faithful to the end. And he teaches us values of being, to be faithful. So be faithful to God also and value things that he values. A supportive father, God wants to be there, is going to be there, and is waiting for you to talk to him. Go and talk to him. And to God be all the glory. Come on. All right, guys, for our last song.